our hearty greetings to all in the words of helen keller character cannot be developed in ease and quiet only through experience of trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened ambition inspired and success achieved this is what team dps pune under the tutelage of takshila education society has been doing relentlessly for years grooming sharpening characters and letting students achieve heights of glory from 2003 till date we have gone from strength to strength amalgamating intellectual athletic as well as aesthetic pursuits and as albert einstein said we shall require a substantially new manner of thinking if mankind is to survive very true in fact our motto is nurture the nature so that we can have a better future thus we take this opportunity to celebrate the world environment day to spread awareness about the importance of the healthy and green environment it is an initiative not only to take accountability for environmental damages but also to generate a sense of responsibility towards the environment in both the people and the government even a small group of thoughtful committed citizens can change the world we have tried our level best to contribute to enhance to preserve and to beautify nature now i call upon dharna chaudhary to highlight the importance of the world environment day and our minuscule but sincere efforts towards the environment in the words of mahatma gandhi what we are doing to the forests of the world is but a mirror reflection of what we are doing to ourselves and one another the plants the tall green trees beautiful birds or any creature all are part of an ecosystem an ecosystem is like a community among the living organisms and the way they interact with each other in the environment isn't that fascinating we inherited a beautiful planet from our ancestors and our activities of deforestation and reckless use of natural resources have damaged the natural ecosystem first let us analyze where we stand almost all the ecosystems today stand degraded to varying degrees due to a mix of factors such as developmental pressures population growth and over exploitation affecting human well-being and economic sustainability scientists have recently warned that 24 billion tons of fertile soil is being lost per year largely due to unsustainable agricultural practices if this trend continues 95% of the earth's land areas could become degraded by 2050 we are therefore in a situation where conservation alone is no longer enough and needs to be combined with ecological restoration now what is ecological restoration well it is the process of assisting the recovery of an ecosystem that has been degraded damaged or destroyed it involves the use of moderate to high intervention techniques for example in a terrestrial forest this could include sapling planting seed broadcasting invasive species management etc restoration adopts a holistic approach focused on all elements of an ecosystem such as soil hydrology flora and fauna project on polluted rivers and lakes in india is just one example now the question arises can we as an individual or as an organization help in ecological restoration yes of course for years we at dps pune are devoted to the best practices that support the environment like vermi composting paper recycling waste management restricted usage of plastic on campus and the mia vaki forest future and choice both lie in our hands let's do something before it's too late nathaniel h eggleston says nature bears long with those who wrong her she is patient under abuse but when abuse has gone too far when the time of reckoning finally comes she is equally slow to be appeased and to turn away her wrath i would like to conclude on a positive note that i don't want to protect the environment i want to create a world where the environment doesn't need protection thank you
Thank you, Dharna, for that thought-provoking speech. Coming up next is a nostalgic journey of our school campus, which will not only demonstrate our green endeavors, but also evoke a wave of enchanting memories in all of us. Trust me, you will recall a panorama of the hustling and bustling, the laughter and innocence of our little angels. Let's enjoy this short film. The nature is our mother. The mother of plenty has many names. She is the goddess Gaia to the Greeks, Aila to the Igbo people, Sophia to the Russian, Papatuanaku to the Maori, Asaseya to the Zuni Native Americans and to the Indians, she is Bhumi Devi. She is the creator, the giver, the nurturer, the provider, the creator of this universe. Our heartfelt wishes. Happy World Environment Day. Today, 5th June is celebrated as the World Environment Day and the theme this year is Ecosystem Restoration. Let us reimagine, recreate, restore. Suppose if the earth has lived for a hundred years, we have had a mega existence of not even a day. Within that short time, we have polluted her, eroded her and degraded her. If we could live for one more day, can you imagine what we could do? Let us witness this power of destruction. Mother Nature has carved a beautiful and colourful flora and fauna for us. We are nature's best creation and yet we have inflicted her with the worst injuries. Bear in mind, environmental pollution is an incurable disease. We have polluted the land we live on the air we breathe and the food we eat. In doing so, we have threatened our own survival. is committed to quality education and society at large. Our institution has set an example when it comes to collective responsibility as a painstaking stakeholder in society. The entire campus has greenery in abundance. Green is universally healing and gives us a sense of renewal, clarity and peace. Greenery at DPS Pune is a natural therapist for all on campus. From the sky-touching Christmas tree 
to the lotus leaves in the mini pond. One straight away walks into the lap of nature. Where there's a will, there's a way. This is proven correct as we come across the Miyawaki forest, covering an area of 1,600 square feet with 18 native plant species. It was a proud moment when 240 saplings were planted by Team DPS Pune on 5th March 2021, the day of inauguration. An incredible endeavor to plant just not one tree, but an entire forest. The three R's reduce, reuse and recycle are followed religiously which is evident in our Jimmy Jolly Park, a tyre park specially designed for kids with ropeways, maze, swings using the recycled tyres to enhance learning. The paper recycling plant in our school creates papers which are used for co-curricular activities. The organic gardens ensure a fully functional vermicomposting pit, generating 80 kilograms of vermicompost every four months. Isn't that amazing? A mini weather station is a constant reminder of temperature changes and acts as a guide to yet another marvel, the botanical garden. Ketify is practiced on the rooftop with a soilless kit where complete organic farming is carried out under the supervision of school gardeners. It is a delight when the SUPW students put up a stall displaying the mini harvest in school. Let us all enjoy the photo gallery, which reminisces nostalgic moments when students took the green initiatives to go green. To add to the green re-engaging in a variety of activities during the offline classes.
front of nature's beauty we are nothing when nature flexes its muscles we have a situation like the covid-19 pandemic that has forced the world into a lockdown nature kept requesting gave warnings but no one listened however like any mother nature is our mother in spite of our desire to harm our mother she will always love us forever while the world came to a standstill nature has bounced back sewage has reduced by 500% oxygen level improved by approximately 80% noise level reduced up to 35% to 68% all over the world and wildlife got a chance to reclaim their land what laws could not enforce a pandemic could the positive impact of this situation is also immense let's respect nature and make every day the environment day by conserving every form of nature we are trying our level best to do our duty towards mother nature what about you are you doing your duty yes together we can let's join hands let's reimagine recreate restore on a virtual tour and reminiscing nostalgic moments spent in school now let's listen to the recitation of the poem warned by silvia stultz the poem is a warning to humanity and holds pollution as well as human beings equally responsible for hurting mother nature let's listen to the thought provoking poem recited by filza shah's rasool ji wali ji Warned by Sylvia Stultz. The sands of time have rendered fair. Blue skies on high, no longer clear. Stars were bright when they came. Now dimmed, obscured, pollution seems. Crystal clear, our waters gleamed. Fish abundant, rivers streamed. Ocean floors sandy white. Now littered. brown pollution splight tree towered high above trunks bearing professed love birds chirping from sights unseen gone paper joint pollution steam one can blame pollution alone as they say you reap what you've sown so let us plant a better seed tear out old roots cultivate weed protect what has been given for free our waters skies wildlife and trees for once they gone don't you say consider yourself warned of that fatal day thank you for the sensitizing recitation to quote dan and edge oaks desires dictate our priorities priorities shape our choices and choices determine our actions Yes, while most people talk, there are a few who choose to fight for a cause, to improve and to protect the quality of the natural environment. Today, we have the privilege to welcome Mr. Shobhana Banerjee, who has been with the Center for Science and Environment for almost two decades, and as a part of the Center's media, outreach, and publications team, has played a crucial role. in almost every major campaign that csc has been involved within this period mr banerji who holds a masters in english literature has worked as a book editor journalist corporate communication professional and media relations officer in his professional working life currently he heads csc's media 
outreach, publications, and environment education teams. Please welcome Mr. Shoparno Banerjee to enlighten us with his thoughts and guide us towards a greener and cleaner earth. Wishing all of you a very purposeful and productive Environment Day. I am Shuparno Banerjee from Center for Science and Environment in New Delhi. And I'm thankful to the organizing schools for granting me this opportunity to interact with you all. Before I get into the subject of climate change, which is the point of my discussion here today, let me underline one thing. Designating one day in the calendar as World Environment Day is an excellent idea, no doubt about it. But does it mean that we do all our thinking and chest beating about environment only on this date? No. As responsible citizens of this nation and this planet, we must celebrate every day as an environment. Every day for us should be a day when we think of how important it is to live sustainably and how critical it is to keep our surroundings pollution free. Every day for us should be a day when we resolve to actively work towards turning those thoughts into action. Having said that, let me come to the main subject of my address here, climate change. It is a term that is familiar to most of you. Your teachers talk about it. You also read about it in newspapers or hear about it on television almost all the time. What is this climate change? As we struggle with this pandemic, the COVID-19 situation, we seem to have forgotten that a more insidious enemy is eating away at the world. This is climate change. Textbooks connected to the warming of the globe, which is leading to some really damaging impacts on our earth. Many of us who live in cities and urban centers have read about it, but we do not really connect it to what is happening around us now with frightening regularity. How many of you have read about the absolutely fearsome cyclone Tate, which hit the west coast of India recently in May. It has devastated cities like Mumbai and Thiruvananthapuram, as well as huge tracts of rural hinterlands, destroying crops and property, killing people and animals. Cyclones, you will say, are natural disasters. But did you know that the frequency, intensity, and ferocity of cyclones have increased because of climate change? Did you know that scientists believe the severe droughts and floods, which India keeps struggling with every year, and Bihar is a prime example where it happens, could be because of climate change? So what is this warming of the earth that we keep harping about? And how does it lead to such deadly disasters and other equally deadly impacts? According to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, also known as UNFCCC, climate change, quote unquote, refers to long-term changes in climate which result directly or indirectly from human activity. Human activity, that is the key term here. What is this human activity that we are talking about? What we are talking about is the way we humans have used fossil fuels like coal and petroleum the way we have rampantly misused our natural resources, essentially the very way we have lived our lives all this while. Our incessant burning of unclean fossil fuels to run our industries and power plants and vehicles has resulted in generation of huge quantities of carbon dioxide, the deadliest of the greenhouse gases. Carbon dioxide traps heat from the sun and keeps it in the atmosphere like a glass greenhouse wood. Once released, carbon dioxide can stay in the atmosphere for over 100 years, which is why the gas released a century ago continues to warm the planet even today. There are other greenhouse gases that contribute to climate change as well, such as methane, ozone, and nitrous oxide. Together, these gases have led to the phenomenon of what is called global warming which in turn has triggered extensive changes in natural phenomena. For instance, it has heated the oceans by the equivalent of one atomic bomb explosion per second for the past 150 years. Glaciers and their ice is melting worldwide, especially at the Earth's poles, leading to a rise in sea levels, which is threatening to swallow up our smaller island nations. In some regions, 
climate change has led to more severe drought conditions, increasing the risk of wildfires, crop damage, and drinking water shortages. In India and other parts of the world, rains and monsoons have become far more unpredictable, thereby impacting agricultural practices and making us more vulnerable to food insecurity. Rising temperatures are also affecting wildlife and their habitats. The lovable polar bear, for instance, is in real danger of becoming extinct. In Antarctica, some populations of penguins have seen an alarming 90% dip in their numbers. Now, the question that we have to ask is, what is the world doing to save itself from this clear and present danger? For many years now, countries have joined together under the UN to combat climate change. But is there something that we as individuals can do? We can. By resolving to use energy, clean energy to fuel our homes and our lifestyles, use more energy efficient appliances, for instance, or opt for renewable energy, solar, wind, etc., to power your needs. Our cars and other vehicles are one of the biggest sources of carbon emissions. Let us resolve not to drive if we can walk or cycle, or take public transport. Let us resolve to stop burning off solid waste wherever we see it happening. Better still, let us control our consumption so that we do not end up generating massive mountains of waste. Let us resolve to recycle and reuse. As students and teachers, you have an immensely powerful voice. Your opinion can sway the opinions of your parents, your families, your communities. Let us resolve to make ourselves aware, to make ourselves strong with knowledge so that we can persuade others of the importance of changing the way we live and let live. From CSE, which has played a major role in making India and the world aware of the imminent danger that we are in from climate change, this is the message I bring. Make these resolutions today and live them every day of your lives. Make every day count. Make every day an environment day. Only when you do that will you survive this threat. Thank you and God bless all of you. Stay safe, stay well, and stay enlightened. Thank you so much, sir, for inspiring us. I'm sure everyone has greatly benefited from your words of wisdom. And now, we will take you to the magical world of hand puppetry, where you will witness puppets voicing a strong message against pollution and how one must act quickly to fix it. So fasten your seat belts and witness the scintillating performance. The sun rises in Vasudha's face on a wonderful summer morning. She stretches and gets ready for school. On her way out the door, she grabs a packet of chips. Vasudha leisurely munches on her treat. As she makes her way down, the long road to school. While crossing the forest on her way to school, she throws her empty bag of chips into the face of a squirrel. Excuse me, young child. You must throw your trash in the forest. Then where else am I supposed to throw it? When the animals of the forest heard this conversation mm -hmm. taking place, they began to gather around Vasudha. Child, you have a lot to learn. Always keep your litter with you until you reach your home or another place where you can access a trash can. You must always segregate your waste. Do you understand? That's all right, but how do I segregate my waste? Waste segregation is very easy. There are four kinds of waste, wet waste, dry waste, sanitary waste, and hazardous waste. Wet waste includes biodegradable waste such as vegetable peels, food leftovers, meat, and bones. Dry waste refers to any material that isn't damp and can be recycled such as plastic and paper. Sanitary waste includes medical waste like dressings, gauze pieces, 
needles, surgical equipment, expired medicines, etc. And are you aware, nowadays, due to the pandemic, infectious wastes like PPEs, gloves, masks, etc. also need to be disposed carefully. Hazardous waste refers to waste which contains toxic or dangerous materials such as e-waste. Each of these four must be segregated and put into four different containers. Along with waste segregation, always remember the five R's. Refuse, reduce, reuse, repurpose, and recycle. Thank you, kind animals. You have taught me a lot today. Entranced by this new information, she began thinking on how to implement waste segregation at home. She was suddenly jolted out of her revival by the sight of a dead fish on the sidewalk. She looked over at the lake beside her, shocked to find it filled with the dead fish. She was about to kick the dead fish on the sidewalk when it let out with a gurgling sound. Young child, please help me! Vasudha bent down to inspect the fish that lay there flopping in front of her. The factory on the other bank of the lake has killed most of my friends and families. Only a few of us are still alive. And even we won't last very long. How this happened to you, my little fish? How this happened? A turtle walked up near them. Joined by the other aquatic friends. The factory has been releasing a constant stream of untreated chemicals and industrial affluents into the water. These chemicals are toxic and have killed my friends. Hmm. I can understand these toxic chemicals. Chemicals such as mercury not only affect aquatic life. But humans too. Mercury is eaten by fish and then pass on to human. When fish are eaten, this led to mercury poisoning, which corrodes the gastrointestinal tract of humans and can be fatal. Hmm. Moreover, the factory also releases hot water into the lake, which kills all the fish eggs. To make matter even worse, the chemicals that are killing off aquatic life are helping the algae grow. This has led to the widespread of algal bloom, which is slowly eating up the dissolved oxygen supply in the water. How can I help your situation? Please tell me. Please help to raise the awareness about the hazards of industrial affluence. Every voice that speak up against it will help us. Hmm. Sure, sure, I will do that. Factory releases chemicals without treating them and there are no penalties, fines which bind them in place by creating the petition and getting signature. It can help create pressure to dispose of industrial waste in a safe manner. You can also help by not throwing the plastic and other waste into the lake. We already have enough problems without common human adding to it. I will try my best to help save you and your friends, dear fish and animal. I will definitely try my best. Wasudha picked up the fish and gently laid it back in the river and thus 
was to have continued on her way to school, now thinking of how to help spread awareness about water pollution. Ron Sugar, she is brought back to reality by the loud squawking of a parrot. A parrot was flying in the air in circles and creating a racket. Parrot, what has happened to you? Young child, the air is filled with so much smoke. I find it very hard to breathe. The realities of life hit first to the heart after listening to the animals' stories of pain. Nearby birds saw Vasudha's confused expressions and flogged around her. How has this happened to you, lovely parrot? Each day, from trees in the distance, spirit blew the smoke into the air. Cars lie within the streets, like beetles and little puffs of pollution. Meow, they're continuous honking. Hurts my ears so much. Meow. It always wakes me up at night when I try to catch some sleep. Meow. Yeah. Oh, oh. In the city, oh, the lights are never completely off, oh, oh. leading to so much light pollution oh, that I find trouble figuring out puck, puck, when the sun has set and night has begun. I long to see the stars. Puck, 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 puck. Meow. Widespread deforestation. Meow. Has pushed me and my family out of the forest. Meow. And into the city in hope of a safer shelter. But my problems have not stopped. Meow, I am still being tortured by the humans. Meow. I'm so sorry, dear friends. I never wanted this to happen to you. I will spread awareness at school and home and try to help you. I promise not all humans are as evil as you believe us to be. Thank you, child. You are the kindest human I have ever met. A whole day at school. Vasudha was wondering what she could do. Then, on the way back as she was walking, Ah! I just know what I should do. She comes back home and takes out her EVS notebook. She reads the important three words, recycle, reduce, reuse. Vasudha starts cleaning the pond next to her house. Did you see that Vasudha is putting the vegetable peels in a separate bin? She will use it to make her own wormy compost. Vasudha made sure that no tap is leaking. And she saves electricity. When she goes shopping, she only picks products in eco-friendly packaging. For instance, this container is made of 100% biodegradable plant fiber. And she carries her own cloth shopping bag. She prefers drinking juice from fresh organic local produce over the factory processed juices. She never shops unnecessarily. Let's see what she says when she sees this ad on the newspaper. Hmm, I already have everything I really need. Vasudha followed Greta Thunberg on social media. 
Vasudha realized how important bugs and insects are for the ecosystem. These insects are very important for pollination. She is sowing seeds to make her own organic vegetable garden and adds vermicompost to the soil. This is the compost she made from the vegetable peels she collected from the pond, remember? She waters her plants regularly. Come on everyone, let me show you my garden. This is my pomegranate garden. Yum, yum, yum. This is yummy, fresh and juicy tomatoes. Beans. Cool cucumber. Lime juice, anyone? Job. Is it chili? Watermelon, watermelon. Growing on the wine, growing on the wine. It's watermelon, people. Many, many more. My garden keeps the air fresh and clean. Wait, my picture. And enjoy nature. Ha 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 ha! Look at the little girl doing wonderful things. Are you the next Vasuda? Environment is nobody's property to destroy. It's everyone's responsibility to protect. As the Lai Lama said, it's our collective and individual responsibility to preserve and tend to the world that we live in. So let's take a pledge to commit ourselves to the conservation of the mother nature and the lively planet. No job is too big, no action too small. The care for our earth is the duty of us all. This environment is our legacy. And what we make of it will be our children's heritage. So today I pledge to reduce my carbon footprint by reducing, reusing and recycling whatever I can and refusing plastic disposables wherever its use is not necessary. I pledge to lend a hand in ecosystem restoration by putting my maximum efforts to plant more trees than my actions have cut. Finally, I pledge as a child of this earth to fight against climate change. Spread awareness, conserve Mother Nature's beauty, and promote others to do the same. Better late than never, let's reclaim our only home before it's lost forever. Gratitude is the heartiest of all human emotion. The more you express gratitude for what you have, you can expect to have even more reasons to express gratitude for. Thus, I, on behalf of everyone, would like to extend my heartfelt acknowledgement to Team DPS Pune for giving us an opportunity to organize and mentor us for this event and for showing their confidence in us. I am extremely grateful to all the students in the Student Council and to all the students who have lent us their support to put up this event. To be inspired is great, but to be an inspiration is an honor. I thank our guest speaker, Mr. Shuporno Banerjee, for gracing us with his honorable presence and for motivating us to become responsible citizens. Parental love is the only love that is truly selfless, unconditional, and forgiving. We thank and recognize the support of our parents, without which this event would not have been possible. Last, but certainly not the least, it has been rightfully said that the size of an audience does not matter. What matters is that your audience is listening. We are grateful to our wise audience, without whose cooperation this event would not have been such a great success. Finally, we take your leave with an appeal for a green earth, a clean earth, and to let it breathe. Thank you and have a nice day.